أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا كلوا من طيبات ما رزقناكم واشكروا لله إن كنتم إياه تعبدون In the previous ayat Allah سبحانه وتعالى addresses mankind at large by saying يا أيها الناس كُلُوا مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ O people, eat from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made lawful for you وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ And do not follow the footsteps of Satan إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ Indeed, Satan is a manifest and an open enemy for you so treat him as such and take him as an enemy In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the believers since the believers, those who bear the testimony of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah are the only beneficiaries, are the only ones who benefit from any acts of command, do and don't do, or prohibitions, stay away from that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing them here, Ya ladina amanu, kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnakum, eat from the goodness or the good of that which we have put out for you. وَاشْكُرُوا لِلَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ And render the due gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you truly worship Him alone. Which means that if we do not render the due gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Him and Him alone, we have not worshipped Him alone. وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهُ would have committed shirk in Him. We mentioned before that الحمد يكون باللسان Saying Alhamdulillah is by way of the tongue. الشكر يكون بالجوارح Meaning that the deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes for us as ibadat, meaning that every statement and every action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, accepts from us and rewards us for it. Every action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves from us, accepts from us and rewards us abundantly for. So therefore, there are the deeds of the tongue. You know, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa allahu akbar, often in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our tongues. There are the deeds of the limbs, ruku'a and sujood and, uh, and other actions, other acts of ibadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts from us. Uh, there are the deeds of the heart, the love and the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the softness of the heart when Allah's name is mentioned. So these are all deeds that are considered to be shukr as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the people of Dawood, David, اِعْمَلُوا آلَ دَاوُودَ شُكْرًا وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورٌ So shukr cannot be said by the tongue. One cannot say, oh Allah, shukran, oh Allah, thank you. No. Shukr is performed by the deeds. Now what are the benefits of rendering shukr? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commits himself. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكَ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has committed himself out of his generosity and out of his mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala committed himself If you render the due gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only he will maintain the bounty or the bounties that you are enjoying, but he will increase these bounties and will bring you the bounties that are missing. Mean that whatever bounties that you are missing and that you are eager to have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring that to you, and of course the opposite is true, vice versa. وَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ And if you disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not render the due gratitude to Him, and do not admit of His oneness, and that He is solely the one and the only one deity that is right, rightfully worshipped, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is severe in punishment in this dunya and in the hereafter. Of course, as we know, shukr maintains the bounties that we have and increases it, and also brings the bounties that are missing, and kufr would jeopardize the, you know, the, the, the sustenance or the sustain, uh, sustaining the bounties that we have and will not bring the bounties that we are missing. In other words, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with the health and the wealth, then to render the due gratitude for that is to use that health to go to the masajid, to go perform the hajj, to help people who are less fortunate or those who are unable to you know, help themselves, to raise our children according to the Qur'an and the Sunnah, to follow the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ, to call to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to call to the way of Islam, to follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and so on and so forth. And if one is to use that bounty for that which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
Chances are they will risk losing that and they can only then blame themselves when this bounty disappears. Of course, the best of shukr, as we mentioned before, is a dhikr. The best of shukr is a dhikr. means that to often remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he reminds us so in the Quran and in the Sunnah, وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ And those who often remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and among the males and the females. And of course, those who are oblivious to the members of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he says, نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ They forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made them forget about themselves. Means that he made them forget about that which is good for them in this dunya and in the hereafter. نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ So the best, the best of shukr, the best of gratitude, uh, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is dhikr to often remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the best of dhikr ma tawata alayhi al-qalb wal is that one is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their tongue and the heart is present the mind is present in other words they're not busy with worldly matters and thinking about worldly matters while the tongue is running with the adhkar and the ad'i and so on and so forth I do not say that they do not read the ajr for that however the ajr is much less than one who is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their tongues and with their hearts and with their minds. إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةَ وَالْدَّمَا وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ وَمَا أُهِلَّ بِهِ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ Of course, before we move on to this ayah, it's worthy of noting that places that we, you know, we, we uh, go to, the masajid, the streets, uh, the markets, our homes, uh, our friends' homes, so on and so forth, that these places, when you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're not there, they miss you. Just like the tree trunk, where the Prophet sallallahu used to give the sermon, the Friday khutbah, when he moved and he built the masjid, the masjid in Nabawi in Medina, the tree trunk began to cry. The tree trunk began to cry. And similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of the disbelievers, and he says, فَمَا بَكَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّمَاوَاتِ Meaning that neither the heavens nor the earth cried over them. Why? Because he used to cause mischief on earth. And what ascended to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the disbelievers is nothing but harm. Verses, which this implies, this very ayah implies, that those who are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala diligently, and those who are often remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they die, the earth will cry over them, and so would the heavens. The earth will cry over them, and so would the heavens. Now, for those who do not render, the gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or commit shirk in him or worship another deity aside from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those even the inanimate objects like the sea and the mountains would sort of like would say oh Allah da'ni ughriq ibn Adam oh Allah allow me to drown the son of Adam allow me to drown the son of Adam why? akala rizqak wa abada ghayrak he ate your sustenance and the goodness and the sustenance comes not but from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but yet he served another deity. He worshipped another entity. Similarly, the mountains. Da'ni, uh, O oh Allah, allow me to come tumbling down on the son of Adam. Why? Akala rizqak wa abada ghayrak. He ate your sustenance and he worshipped another entity. So the due gratitude truly and rightfully only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةَ وَالْدَّمَ وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ وَمَا أُهِلَّ بِهِ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions categories of that which he has made prohibited for us for our own good. First of which is al-mayta, that which is dead. And typically the mayta or a dead animal dies because of you know, injuries, dies because of illnesses. So that in and of itself is harmful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of mercy and compassion and wisdom has, that, has made that you know, prohibited for us. وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ Similarly, you know, again, the prohibition is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The wisdom that we try to grasp onto is from what we know. However, if we fail to understand the wisdom in part or in whole, that does not make what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, you know, made prohibited lawful. It still is prohibited because the creator of all has made it prohibited. <laughs> to him belongs the creation and to him belongs the legislation. وَمَا أُهِلَّ بِهِ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ And that which was slaughtered by the name of another entity aside from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he sets for us the pace for us to follow, meaning that a way of ease. فَمَنْ اضْطُرَّ غَيْرَ بَاغٍ وَلَا عَادٍ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ So whoever is compelled to eat the mayta, 
or to eat pork, or to drink alcohol, or to drink that which is unlawful, because of dire circumstances, starvation, they're in a state of war, they're in a state of hunger, whatever the case might be, meaning that there is no other alternative. The halal is not available. And they do not go beyond the limits of that which will sustain them until that which is lawful is you know, available to them. Then there is no sin, there is no uh, you know, guilt for this person, even if they err in, in exercising their judgment, meaning that they could be in a, in, a, in a dire need of food and they would eat beyond that which is necessary, maybe go over a little bit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all merciful, the all forgiven. Here the scholars come out of this ayah with uh, you know, a fiqhi rule, al-darurat tubih al mahdurat that which is a matter of necessity will make that which is prohibited permissible to the extent that will suffice the, necess the necessity. Meaning that if someone is ill, severely ill, and the only way for them to receive treatment in that particular place at that point of time is to perhaps take a medicine that has alcohol in it. So they take it to the extent that is necessary. They take it to the extent that is necessary. If somebody is in dire financial need, and the only way they can bring themselves out of this hardship is to deal with riba. Then they would deal with riba, or they take out an interest-bearing you know, loan, to the extent that is necessary. If someone is in need of a home to live in, and they cannot rent a place, then they do not go out and buy a million dollar home. They simply go out and buy a home that is very modest to contain them and to contain their families until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the way for them. As he says, uh, so the believer always have their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and always will do that and they'll strive towards doing that which pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those who practice that level of taqwa that level of piety and righteousness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them sustenance from where they're never expected that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make an easy way out for them and will grant them sustenance from places where they least expected. Uh, Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all forgiven, the all merciful. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who render the due gratitude to Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are forgiven. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who receive. A uh, good share of his mercy. I will call you Hada, was the first of you, Subhanaka and Hamdik, Nashar, and La Ilaha, and the Stafiro, and a two bullet, Subhana Rob, the Karab, the Rizati, and my Safoon, was a lamb, and I'm Mursaleen, or Hamdulillah, Rob, the Alameen, Salam Alaikum, or Hamdulahi, or